This is articulated skeleton of pelvis, which is formed by anterolaterally two hip bone connected by pubic symphysis and posteriorly by sacrococcygeal portion of vertebral column. In anatomical points, this is uh, very important for uh, articulated pelvis. We can tell the tip of the coccyx, this is the tip of the coccyx and the uh, superior margin of pubic symphysis lies in same horizontal plane and the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle lies in same coronal plane. In associated question, you may be asked what is coronal plane. Coronal plane is the plane which divides our body in the anterior portion and posterior portion. Now come to the joint and formation of uh, bony pelvis. We we told the bony pelvis is formed by two hip bone and uh, sacrament coccygeal uh, portion of uh, vertebral column. The two hip bone are connected by pubic symphysis by secondary cartilaginous joint. And that <coughs> each hip bone is connected or uh, articulated with sacrum by sacroiliac joint which is plain type of synovial joint. And uh, we have also lumbosacral joint which is the, the articulation between the sacrum and the fifth lumbar vertebra which is secondary cartilaginous joint. Now come to the part of the pelvis. Each pelvis is divided into false pelvis and true pelvis. The demarcating line of false pelvis and true pelvis is the pelvic brim or pelvic inlet. Now the pelvic inlet is formed by sacral promontory. The sharp superior margin of the body of the uh, first sacral vertebra is known as sacral promontory and the anterior margin of ala of sacrum then the linear terminalis. The linear terminalis again composed of arcuate line, iliopubic eminence, pectin pubis, the uh, pubic crest and the superior margin of pubic symphysis and the succeeding, uh, succeeding structures of the opposite side. Now uh, you may ask the relation of the um, uh, pelvic inlet. The pelvic, the relation of pelvic inlet from ala of sacrum, the here is uh, related to sympathetic trunk, lumbosacral trunk, iliolumbar artery, then obturator nerve. And in front of sacroiliac joint, it is related to internal iliac vessel, then ureter then ovarian vessel in the suspensory ligament of ovary then vas deferens in case of male round ligament of uterus in case of female then obliterated umbilical artery and median umbilical ligament behind the pubic symphysis now come to the content of false pelvis and true pelvis then in associated question you may be asked the false pelvis why called the false false pelvis is known as false pelvis because it is devoid of anterior bony boundary when the true pelvis is called true because it has bony boundary in all around the content of false pelvis in right side uh, false pelvis contains cecum and vermiform appendix in left side it contains uh, descending colon and caudal and uh, initial part of sigmoid colon for information, the false pelvis is coincides with abdomen proper and the true pelvis is not part of abdomen proper, it is part of pelvis. And the floor of the pelvis is formed by pelvic diaphragm. And uh, before knowing about pelvic diaphragm, we have to know about the pelvic outlet. The pelvic outlet is formed by tip of the coccyx, then uh, sacrotuberous ligament then the inferior margin of conjoint istiopubic ramus and then lower margin of pubic symphysis this is known as pelvic outlet now come to the uh, diaphragm the pelvic diaphragm it is attached from the tip of the coccyx as the pelvic diaphragm is formed by levator and muscle is coccygeous muscle which are arises from the tip of the coccyx it attached to the uh, conjoint ischiopubic ramus uh, as like as this manner and the anterior triangular portion is again uh, covered by urogenital diaphragm now in true pelvis the content of true pelvis is uh, very uh, from male to female if it is a male pelvis then the content of the true pelvis is 
first of all retropubic fat then urinary bladder uh, with prostate then seminal vesicle and then vas deferens and then uh, vesico rectal pouch or pouch of douglas then rectum then in associated question you may be asked what is pouch pouch is a potential space produced by reflection of peritoneum from viscera to viscera if it is a female pelvis then the contents are retropubic fat then urinary bladder then vesico uterine pouch then uterus then recto uterine pouch or pouch of douglas then rectum then below the pelvic diaphragm the area is known as perineum <laughs> then in viva there is very important question about the difference between male pelvis and female pelvis the male in case of male pelvis the uh, anterior super iliac spine is inverted and in case of female pelvis it is straight forward and the muscular projection and uh, the bones are heavy in case of male pelvis but the bones are light in case of female pelvis the iliac fossa is more concave in case of male but iliac fossa is shallow in case of female the pre auricular sulcus pre auricular sulcus is found in case of para swimmen but it is absent in case of nullipara swimmen and male now come to the sacrum the sacrum is uniformly concave in case in case of male but sacrum is flat in upper portion and then abruptly concave in case of female then come to the sacral index sacral index is very important for viva sacral index means the maximum breadth of the sacrum divided by length of the sacrum into 100 this is the sacrum index sacrum sacral index is 115 in case of female but it is only 105 in case of male the obturator foramen this is obturator foramen the obturator foramen is triangular and smaller in case of female and this is oval and larger in case of male the acetabular cavity the acetabular cavity is larger in case of male but it is smaller in case of female then in viva trickly you may be asked the what is the single most important or what is the single most difference between male pelvis and female pelvis then you should answer that the transverse diameter of acetabular cavity is equal to the distance from anterior margin of acetabulum to the symphysial surface of the pubic symphys symphysial surface of the pubis this is equal to in case of male but the distance from anterior margin of the acetabular cavity to the symphysial surface of pubis is larger than the transverse diameter of acetabulum uh, transverse diameter of acetabulum in case of female this is single most important then subpubic angles Subpubic angle is the angle between two con uh, conjoint ischiopubic ramus. It is 50 to 60 in case of male. The subpubic angle is 80 to 90 in case of female. Then ischiopubic ramus, ischiopubic rami are more everted in case of male due to a strong attachment of pleura of penis. But it is less everted in case of female due to due to uh, attachment of uh, crura of clitoris only this is not as strong as mm, the attachment of crura of penis then istial spine this is the istial spine the istial spine is inverted in case of male but it is everted in case of female these are uh, the gross important difference between male pelvis and female pelvis now come to the axis of pelvis in anatomical position in anatomical position the uh, superior border of the sacrum and the superior margin of the pubic symphysis is uh, make 50 to 60 degree angle and uh, this is known as plane of the uh, pelvic inlet the perpendicular line in the center of the plane of the pelvic inlet is known as the is known as uh, the axis of the pelvis 
the uterus body of the uterus the axis of the body of the uterus coincides with the uh, axis of the pelvis and the axis of the uh, pelvic outlet the pelvic outlet means the uh, plane from uh, tip of the coccyx to the lower margin of the pubic symphysis uh, gives uh, 10 to 20 degree angle uh, this is known as plane of pelvic outlet in the plane of pelvic outlet um, the center of the pelvic outlet is perpendicular uh, uh, perpendicular to the axis of the pelvic outlet the axis of the pelvic outlet coincides with the axis of the vagina these are very important these bony pelvis are very important for gynecological purpose now come to some uh, gynecological measurement known as anthropometric measurement this is pelvic inlet in case of pelvic inlet we can uh, show three diameter anterior posterior diameter oblique diameter and transverse diameter anterior posterior diameter means the, the distance between the center of the allows the center of the sacral promontory to the upper margin of the pubic symphysis this is anterior posterior diameter and this anterior posterior diameter is about 11 centimeter in case of nulliparous women and uh, these diameters are uh, vary from uh, writer to writers but we uh, which diameters are clinically practiced we uh, are authorized that <coughs> now oblique diameter oblique diameter of pelvic inlet is extends from the sacroiliac joint to the iliopubic eminence of the opposite side so this is the oblique diameter of the pelvic inlet the oblique diameter of pelvic inlet is 12 centimeter and the transverse diameter means maximum transverse diameter of the pelvic inlet now diameter of the pelvic cavity in pelvic cavity the oblique diameter is the largest diameter the oblique diameter extends from the lower point of the sacroiliac joint to the center of the obturator membrane this is known as oblique diameter the oblique diameter in uh, pelvic cavity is 12.5 centimeter and the transverse diameter and anterior posterior diameter of pelvic cavity both are 12 centimeter in uh, in case of uh, female pelvis the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic cavity is coincides with the distance is uh, coincides with the distance from the center of the pubic symphysis to the center of the third sacral vertebra and the transverse diameter is coincides with the maximum transverse diameter and the diameter of the pelvic outlet the pelvic in pelvic outlet the anterior posterior diameter is the distance from tip of the coccyx to the lower margin of the pubic symphysis and the oblique diameter is coincides with the oblique diameter is coincides with the center of the sacrotuberous ligament center of the sacrotuberous ligament to the um, lower portion of the obturator foramen now transverse diameter transverse diameter is the transverse distance between the, the lower point of to ischial tuberosity in case of pelvic outlet the anterior posterior diameter is the highest diameter which is 13 centimeter now in case of pelvic inlet the transverse diameter is the highest diameter in case of pelvic uh, cavity the, the um, oblique diameter is the highest diameter and in case of pelvic outlet the um, anterior posterior diameter is the pelvic is the highest diameter so in case of normal vaginal delivery the fetus passes uh, the pelvic inlet transversely then passes the pelvic cavity obliquely then passes the pelvic outlet or the, through the vagina it uh, passes anterior posteriorly in case of normal vaginal delivery in case of <coughs> obstructed delivery in case of obstructed delivery the um, biparietal diameter is larger than the pelvic cavity then normal vaginal delivery is not possible then uh, for <coughs> ensurity of the life of the mother and fetus, cesarean section is essential. 
now we have to know some relations uh, which is repeated in the uh, lectures on uh, hip bone what are the structures transmitted through the greater sciatic foramen and laser sciatic foramen the greater sciatic foramen transmits some structures with the greater sciatic foramen is divided into divided by piriformis muscle above the piriformis muscle it transmits superior gluteal nerve and superior gluteal vessel below the piriformis muscle it transmits sciatic nerve nerve to the uh, quadratus femoris posterior femoral cutaneous nerve inferior gluteal nerve inferior gluteal vessels nerve to the obturator internus internal pudental vessel and pudental nerve all these structures <coughs> passes from pelvic cavity inside to outside the lower three structure or the medial three structures then the nerve to the obturator internus internal pudental vessel and pudental nerve again enters into pelvic cavity through the laser sciatic foramen then you may be asked the uh, foramen of sacrum we are uh, discussed about this in the lectures on sacrum and these are ventral sacral foramina which transmits the ventral rami of upper four sacral spinal nerve and lateral sacral artery the body of the sacrum is related to the median sacral vessel now come to the types of the pelvis <coughs> anatomically there are four types of pelvis gynecoid android anthropoid and platypoid gynecoid pelvis are the um, common for female and android pelvis are for the male and anthropoid pelvis is found in case of negro female and the platypoid pelvis are the flat pelvis which are uh, formed in pathological condition in uh, vitamin d deficiency and gynecoid pelvis means rounded pelvis android pelvis means heart shaped pelvis and anthropoid pelvis means anterior posteriorly oval pelvis and platypoid pelvis means transversely oval pelvis <coughs> there are two terms lumbarization and sacralization sacralization means the fusion of lumbar vertebra with sacrum and lumbarization means the fusion of first sacral vertebra with last lumbar vertebra there are gynecological importance of uh, lumbarization and sacralization in case of sacralization the pelvic cavity uh, the length of the pelvic cavity is increased and in case of sacralization the length of the pelvic cavity is decreased these are all about the articulated pelvis if uh, you have any query about articulated pelvis then you can uh, post in callosum bd study group or comment in the comment box uh, thanks everyone for followers.